How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're well. Uh, thanks for being here. As always, you know, if you slap the subscribe button and do stuff to the notification bell, that really helps me out and keeps me coming back and doing all this shit for free. Oh, so thanks very much. Subscribe. That's it. All right. Got that bit out of the way. So what we're looking at today is... Um, it's kind of an, an a f it's not so much a lesson, not so much a tutorial, because for most of the people that come to this channel, they kind of already know what to do with the Helix. We do get a few kind of beginners. Um, so there'll be some things that you might already know and some things that you don't know. So what I've done is dragged up uh, just a random amp, which was the Line 6 Badonk, uh, which is a great amp. Um, some of the, you know, the, the heavy doom metal -y type of guys use it. I don't really, really kind of touch on it a lot, and I thought it'd be cool to try and just take it out and uh, play around with it and show you the effect of, you know, effects where and why and what happens as, as we put them in certain places. So, as I always do, I separate the amp and the cab, and that is kind of the format that that comes up in. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the cab along ever so slightly and get ready to pop something in the middle there. So here is our, is this what all YouTubers say? Here's my dry tone. It's kind of quiet, but it, it will pick up in a sec. I did have a little fiddle with the amp. So nothing too outrageous there. So in the middle, again, this is a really old trick. A lot of us have been doing this for a long time, and some of us still do it, and some of us don't. It kind of depends on the amp. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've took the kinky boost, turned the drive all the way off, turned the boost on, turned the bright on, I'll turn that off, and then I will turn it on and show you what happens. <laughs> So it does make a massive difference. The thing with the kinky boost is some people go, well, why don't you put a drive pedal in the middle of the amp in the car? Blah, 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 blah. It's not driving. It's just there's a bit of a nice, smooth, circuity kick, if you like. It's not really, it's not overdrive and anything, uh, especially where it sits as well. Obviously, if we put it in front of the amp, it takes on a completely different dynamic altogether. So let's take that one out and... Let's look at our reverb, and normally, like I say, I use the tile. Uh, but for today's exercise, I wanted to show you stuff that you can do with the, you know, just a kind of plate. So here's just a, a legacy plate. Kind of nice. One of the places that you can put it as well is in between the amp and cab again. Again, some people have done this. They swear by it. They say it makes, you know, a bit of a difference to the tone. Personally, I think it gives it a little bit more, almost like you, there's, it's hitting a wall and bouncing back, which you would get on early reflections on the cab anyway. Let me put it back in front of the cab. back in the middle he says pop it back in the middle it's just something a little bit different there's just an ever so slightly different flavor to it so i mean i i kind of like that you're doing stuff that's a bit unusual that that's that's kind of my bag anyway baby uh all right so i'll go to the front and i'm going to take out a mono mutant filter which if you've seen this uh in use on my videos before we don't want it to do that so all i'm going to do is drop the mix down take the peak down 
Pull the mix down a little bit more, take the peak down a little bit more. Almost kind of cocked wah. Take that off. Back on. Ever so slight, you know, it's not it's not dramatic, it's not dramatic. Like Downton Abbey, if you watch Downton Abbey. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into my favorites, I'm gonna hit my dual delay, and then I'm gonna go hit my glitz. I'm gonna come into the dual delay and I'm just gonna take the level down ever so slightly. Because you know, I do use a shit ton of delay. These are my standard settings for the dual delay. This is what I use for in all of my lead patches. Um, and that's kind of become my go-to. If you download any of my patches for free of custom tone, you'll be able to uh, kind of just copy the settings from that. So it's very straightforward, it's very simple. Uh, glitz, reverb on the end as well. Uh, and again, they're the settings for that. So that then gives us this. <laughs> which again already makes it sound huge. So, huge. If we go into our stereo compressors, I'm gonna drop in and pick out the LA Studio Comp. Immediately I'm gonna come in and get that to about 4.8, 4.9. I'll drop the mix down to about 80%. Um, that then gives us that on the end. <laughs> I want you to listen to the effects. You can kind of hear how loud this patch is getting now, which is, you know, some things that, one of the things that people have said to me before is that your patches sound really big. It's just doing little things like this to get the best out of it. So I've moved the compressor now just after the cab and before the effects. That then gives us that. Has a better effect on the effects. I'll put it on the end and show you the difference between that and that. It's subtle, but it's definitely different. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so let's now go and do the whole tile reverb thing because if you haven't if you haven't seen this before or this is your first time being at the channel, why? Why? Uh, we we'll take the tile reverb. The settings that I do for this again for those of you that have not been here before, I just take the decay down to five. I turn the pre delay off. Drop the mix down to forty percent. I will turn that off. And then on. And then on. Gives it that push at the end. Okay, so there's another one. Uh, let's take a look at dual pitch. So we go into our stereo dual pitch, um, and this sounds horrendous. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the intervals off. We're gonna remove all of the intervals, interval two. Uh, I could just type these in, but you know, for the sake of of uh, being a professional YouTuber, 
I am not going to do that. Okay, so uh, then we're going to go into our scents, and we're going to do one side minus eight and the other side plus eight. Making sure that I'm in the right place. Uh, if you came here for the clicks, you're in the right place. <laughs> okay, and then that then again still sounds horrendous until we move it. So we're going to pop it just before the delays. And again, we're, we're kind of getting into that Van Halen-y. It will go louder when we turn it off. I'll probably drop the mix down a little bit as well. You can kind of hear that phasing thing going on. Uh, I could, if I wanted, kind of pop that down there. The volume does jump up when we, we run it like that, but it is what it is. I mean, that sounds massive. So again, if we wanted to be, you know, really adventurous, we could come up the top and we could bang in another stereo comp. Uh, drop that gain down because obviously we don't want to like kick the patch to the point where it's clip clipping its tits off. <laughs> So if you look at what we've got on the screen, and normally, again, I apologize, we normally do about eight minutes on these videos, but we're into 12 minutes now, so I'm gonna wrap up in, in a sec, because people kinda get, they finish their poo when they get off the toilet, you know, and then they kinda stop watching, and it is what it is. But there is minimal stuff there in that patch, minimal, but it already sounds massive. <laughs> I think if I had to turn up to a gig with a HX Stomp or there was, you know, a, a Stomp XL or a pod or whatever kind of lying around, I would be tempted to just go with this because I know I'm getting everything out of it, you know what I mean, if, if I didn't have my rig. So let's just take that out. We'll take that out. And then finally, I will put in my EQ, which is always in my favorites. These are the settings that I have as kind of default. Um... Uh, let's just take the delay off and let you hear that. You can hear it picking up them frequencies. So clearly that EQ is not realistically set for this for this amp. So I could, if I wanted to, I'd move it in between the amp and cap. take some of the top off kind of goes a bit muffly so it was probably all right where it was and that's roughly round about it i mean what we've covered is placing stuff in certain parts of the patch uh little bits of adjustments here and there and kind of using stuff that you wouldn't realistically think is the the right thing to do uh, but like I always say with Helix patches, there is no right and wrong way. Do whatever the fuck you want, because we're not here for a long time, are we? All right, if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. I will see you on the next one in a few days. Always like and subscribe and do all that good stuff. See you later.